David Hockney is here. He is considered to be one of Britain's greatest contemporary artists. Yet he is perhaps best known for immortalizing the city of Los Angeles in art. Over the years, his paintings and photography have reflected his fascination with swimming pools and the landscape of California. Recently, he put down his paintbrush to concentrate on a new book. Secret Knowledge is Hockney's study of the use of optics in the works of the great masters. His theory that Western art has been dependent on optical devices for 400 years is at the center of a debate in the art world. I'm pleased to welcome David Hockney to this table for a conversation about this, and my hope that later on we'll go to Los Angeles and do a profile of him about all of his work. Welcome. Well, thank you. Great to have me. you here. <laughs> <laughs> I already like you. Uh, you. You are going to come to New York, and to Saturday morning you're going to have it out and explain exactly what your theory is, and you've brought all these art historians together, and it's go mano mano. Well, I didn't do it. Ren Weschler did okay. that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and actually, it's not just my theory. Lots of other people would share it as well. I've just probably pushed it uh, a little further back than uh, people thought. That's all. Uh, but uh, I think there's lots of people thought the same thing for a long time. And what are we talking about? We're talking about optical projections, uh, which, after all, that's what television is. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and they were used by artists. Now, uh, how were they made? People think, most people think cameras were invented in the 19th century, uh, but uh, they're very old, actually. In fact, it's perfectly natural. Uh, it's uh, a natural thing. A pinhole in a room produces an image on the opposite wall. But uh, people have thought that lenses developed by the 17th century. But we did discover, uh, the main discovery I made was it was possible to make projections with a mirror not just a lens. Yeah. Now that was not known in the world of art. It was known in the world of science, but of course they're very far apart uh, today. They weren't, of course, in the 15th century. But I found that out when we found it out and did it. I mean, meaning actually anybody can do it at home. Uh, any shaving mirror or yeah. makeup mirror is a concave mirror. And so what would you do at home? Uh, <clears throat> if you take a very bright window mm -hmm. uh, and the room is reasonably dark and you uh, hold the mirror up at the edge of the window, yeah. you will get a picture of what's across the street upside yeah. down on the wall uh, in color and it will move. Okay, uh, now what are you saying? Let's take that image because they can get it now. Take that image, and what's the, what are what would artists do? How would they use that image? Well, first of all, they'd be rather thrilled. I mean, we were thrilled when we saw it, you know, last year. So, six hundred years ago, they would be very, very thrilled. In fact, probably even frightened of it because it's magical. It yeah. seems magical. And you got to remember, no cameras at that time, and in fact. You believe photography killed this? Well, remember, no, there were cameras. Photography uh, is a chemical invention. Well, I understand. You see, uh, they know there were cameras. I mean, the oh, first, yeah, of course, cameras. The first photographs were made with cameras that were made for landscape artists. Yeah. Naturally, they weren't made for photographers. That's what they used, and uh, so. But that's known only until, as I say, the date about the. It's the 17th century. Uh, to take it back 200 years before that, uh, you have to involve some, we know probably they weren't lenses, but there were mirrors. Uh, and there's certainly a mirror at the back of Mr. and Mrs. Arnold Feeney. Yeah. That's a convex mirror, but the back of a convex mirror is a concave mirror. Uh, it's just going the other way. And that would project an image of that chandelier onto the uh, canvas. In fact, we did it. We had a chandelier made, a replica, and with a mirror just four and a half inches in diameter, 
projected it the exact size it is in Van Eyck's painting. And then what did you do? Well, I then assumed, well, he would have known this. Yeah. Um, and here was a technique to draw this very difficult uh, chandelier uh, with uh, this equipment. We know that equipment existed uh, in 1430. Why would you assume that great artists would use it? Because artists would use any tool available. Uh, why wouldn't they? I mean, it seems to me odd to assume they wouldn't, actually. That's odd. Uh, remember, nobody's ever seen a photograph. Nobody. You're seeing the three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional plane. And we're all fascinated by yeah. that. That is not the appeal of television. It's yeah. not the appeal of uh, pictures. Uh, and this was a moving picture, remember? It's in color, and it's moving. And if you do it today, people are quite taken with it. I mean, when I was showing it to people in LA, just we set up uh, uh, with a cabbage outside a window, and there it was spinning round. I mean, people were, yeah, they had no idea it could be done, actually. Um, and it's not written about, that is not written about. The uh, concave mirror uh, is not in text. Uh, why? Um, well, I think it's people would, artists would keep it secret. They would, actually. Uh, my original title for the book, of course, was Lost Knowledge. But the publishers thought secret knowledge would be better. Tells you like something inside and nobody knows. Yeah. Uh, but I think it was also lost. But listen to what the subtitle is, Rediscovering the Lost Techniques of the Old Masters. Do you have any doubt that they use this technique? No, I don't. No. You don't. I mean, you are 100% uh, believe it. To see them is to use them. I'm not suggesting, I don't know quite how, but once you've seen them, you know they use them because they look like paintings, actually. Uh, suddenly you've got, you know, tonalities made different. I mean, uh, harmonies uh, that are very beautiful. Some might say, okay, David, let's say you're right. So what? So what? Uh, the interesting thing is actually not because of art history in the past. The interesting thing is because of today, really, because in a sense, we're back to a hand in a camera. What I'm suggesting is the hand was in the camera for 400 years, then chemicals were in the camera for 180, yeah. but now there's digits in it, and that means... Digital cam. You can move things about, anybody can. Yeah. Meaning you're drawing, it's not drawing. Yeah. If you're moving something about, that's what you're doing. Well, in a way, that's now getting very, very big. Are we therefore losing a veracity that we believed before for 170 years? We're therefore going back, uh, going forward and going back to the construction of pictures with the lens and the hand. Why haven't art historians all agreed with you? Why do many of them say, not so fast? Well, that's all they're saying. They're not disagreeing. No, okay, that's no, right. That's they're what they're saying. Disagreeing. You can't, actually, because the science is there. Yeah. I want to come to this, because we got this great video. Talk me through it as we look at this. We're, we're seeing what you're talking about. What is that? That's, uh, there's the projection of the baptistry. Uh, that's the mirror uh, on a 